I'll just go on record. I'm very comfortable saying it. I believe in God. I do. Mm -hmm. I think there are many things that science can explain. Mm -hmm. There are certain things science can't explain. But I'll even go a step further, which is that. Hola a todos, bienvenidos a God Science. Mi nombre es Cristian Jiménez, soy un médico mexicano y quiero darte la bienvenida a este espacio dedicado a abordar la ciencia, cultura y teología. En esta ocasión les traemos un episodio muy especial porque traemos a un neurocientífico que se encuentra en todas las redes sociales, en todos los medios, que quizá muchos de ustedes conocerán. Es el doctor Andrew Hoverman, un destacado y renombrado neurocientífico y profesor de la Escuela de Medicina de la Universidad de Stanford. Y bueno, en este episodio les vamos a mostrar una conversación reciente en la que compartió su experiencia personal sobre su fe en Dios y la intersección con su carrera como neurocientífico. Así que no se pierdan esta conversación. Al final estaré dejando mis comentarios personales. About the brain and all the, I mean, you, you mentioned it last night and this, this had me thinking. It's like, when you think how all that works, I have to take an aside and say, how could that happen in nature is without a creator? Yeah. So, well, here's the thing. I mean, we know that the programs, meaning genes, so genes, DNA, and there's DNA, then there's RNA, and then there's proteins. And proteins are the action end of the game where they say, hey, like, grow over here. Don't grow over there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, become this kind of cell, dopamine cell or a serotonin cell. We know that those mechanisms are incredibly well conserved from mice to humans. Now, mm -hmm. certain things happen in the human brain that you don't see in other species, like the elaboration of the parts of the brain that are involved in context and planning, mm -hmm. especially. But the memory systems, the ones that control hormones, breathing, heart rate, they're very similar. Mm -hmm. Not exactly the same, but very similar. Okay. When you start to study and understand brain development, as I did, or neuroplasticity, or dopamine, you have to, meaning I don't care if you're an atheist, agnostic, or believer in creator, you have to step back and just go, wow, wow. Now, then of course, there's this difference among scientists as to who believes in God, who mm -hmm. doesn't. I'll just go on record. I'm very comfortable saying it. I believe in God. I mm -hmm. do. I think there are many things that science can explain. Mm -hmm. There are certain things science can't explain, but I'll even go a step further, which is that all the elements of science are entirely compatible with the idea of there being a God. And I'm not the first scientist to say this. I mean, mm -hmm. Einstein believed in God. Um, Carl Jung, one of the greatest psychologists ever, clearly believed in God. There are many atheist scientists. There are agnostic scientists who are just kind of like unsure, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I'm in absolute awe, absolute awe of biology. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible that we're sitting here having this conversation. It's just, it's that with language, that there are little sound yeah. waves that are, you're perceiving and understanding. I mean, it's just, and I think the brain represents the apex of incredible in terms of biology. Like the heart is interesting. The immune system is interesting. The liver is interesting. But the brain is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, think about the number of different ways you can move your body compared to another species. Mm -hmm. Think about what you did today. Think about what I was attempting to do today, right? Yeah. Spectacular. Think about technology. These lights, the, you know, Tesla cars, spaceships. I mean, yeah. the internet. I mean, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And yet, oh, so real. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, we could talk a bit about how I, you know, Well, I'll just say this. Secretly, I've always prayed. I grew up in a split religion home. My mm -hmm. family's like the UN. We've got people from Guatemala, <laughs> uh, Denmark, Argentina, New York, like all the different political battles are in my family. It's super left, super right, libertarians, mm -hmm. lefties to the, you know, yeah. it's crazy. Uh, Thanksgivings can be difficult. Yeah. But I'll say this, you know, I absolutely pray. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that the idea, but also what for me is really a deep belief, which is that we can't control everything. We're not in as much control as we think we are. And that the magnificence of biology and the magnificence of, of nature is, um, it, it's, imp it's impossible to, for me to conceive how that could be come about any other way. It just is. Now, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, full stop. Who do you pray to? Uh, that's an interesting one because I think uh, God, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I absolutely do. I've actually started reading the Bible recently, start mm-hmm. to finish. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's my duty to like learn and in some sense compare Old and New Testament. Mm-hmm. I, I'm like really, I'm really interested in the stories, but I'm also, I'm fascinated by the story of us, right? And, and the story of everything. And so, but yeah, I pray out loud in the morning, um, sometimes again in the middle of the night if I wake up. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's only recently that I've been doing this more often. It's given you yeah. peace? Or? Oh, my goodness. It's given me so much. It's given me peace. And, you know, it, it, this is going to sound weird and probably people are going to be like, what are you talking about? If this, it, it, it works. Mm-hmm. It works. There's a, there's a way in which certain things I was grappling with, you know, um, I just couldn't resolve. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. And it was all internal and I just couldn't do it. What, what, how were you trying to resolve these things? Like have an answer? Yeah. Discipline myself. I mean, mm-hmm. it wasn't like I was super, uh, you know, undisciplined. I mean, obviously I have a lot of self-discipline, but yeah. you know, I, like I, I always pray, you know, I want to remove my defects of character. I want to, um, you know, I, I certainly pray for other people. Um, I, I mostly, you know, these days I pray for the ability to really harness as much care and love for other people and for myself, something I haven't been that good at Mm -hmm. in my lifetime um, in order to be able to put the best possible work into the world Mm. to really serve. Like I really see myself as serving higher power. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a conduit. Right. Um, And the better I can do that, the better I'm serving, the better I'm serving, the more I feel connected to humanity. Do you think that with this, with this, I don't know if you've always felt like this. It sounds like it's more of a, a newer, newer feeling. But Somewhat, although secretly. Yeah. Like in Santa Barbara, I'll just say there's this place, Sands Beach, down at the end of the beach, if anyone's ever been there. And mm-hmm. I used to run down there once a week. I always did a long run, long for me, run yeah. on Sunday, yeah. minus a 72 pound rock. Right. And I would pray. Mm. And I just pray for, you know, be honest with myself, be honest with others. And that was years ago. God was 18. Oh, okay. 19, 20. So, um, and then, you know, I've seen some hardship along the way. I mean, I would just mention that I've had three amazing scientific advisors. You know, Harry shot himself. Mm. Two weeks after I told him we published a paper in science, he said, come on down to Santa Barbara. It'd be great to take you out for pizza and celebrate. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, ate a bullet in the bathtub. Barbara died of cancer when she was 50. I'm mm-hmm. friends with her daughter. I, you know, saw her. She did have those two kids. <laughs> yeah. One's a neuroscientist. Oh man, um, at McGill, and um, she was like a mom to me. Mm-hmm. She died. I was speaking at her memorial, and then my postdoc advisor died. He was a pretty impressive guy in mm-hmm. his own right. And so, I, at one point, I'm thinking like, what's going on? You know, I'm right. the common denominator. Right. How am I picking these people? Mm-hmm. But they were amazing, and you know, I had some friends commit suicide, you know, this kind of thing. And, and, you know, you live long enough, that's going to happen. People are going to go. Mm-hmm. That's just the reality. Mm-hmm. But there were times I'm like, you know, it was dark. It was, you know, like, where am I? Why, why me? And at those moments too, just accepting that there's a plan and it's happening for a reason. And I don't know what it is. And just putting my trust in that allowed me to, to grieve those things properly and to really try and you know, I got the message, I got the download to take the lessons from them and just not waste a single day mm. and to do things that re- I really felt mattered. Mm. So to me, it's all always been linked right. to, you know, sort of forces greater than me, certainly. Does it feel like, you know, when I hearing all this, does it feel like once you've taken like this, a, a more, I don't know, intentional turn for being grateful and praying, you're not drinking since 2019. It seems like that's been in tandem with your success. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I always wanted to have a deeper relationship to to God. I always wanted that. And mm-hmm. I kind of was like, why don't I have that? Well, duh. That's like saying, I want to be fit. Why am not, I I'm not fit? Well, because you're not running, you're not, not lifting, you're not doing the things. It was like, yeah. and it was a... Um, a couple of different people that kept showing up in my life and, and, and they were doing it and it was like, well, pray. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've learned, and I certainly try and do this, that a lot of prayer is about listening. Mm. 
And a lot of prayer is about you, you ask for things or listen for things. And then an hour later, two days later, you go, wait, mm -hmm. like it doesn't happen in the moment necessarily, just like fitness. I don't right. want to compare fitness. I don't want to trivialize prayer by, by comparing to right. fitness, but there's some parallels that are relevant. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, it's right. consistent work. Yeah. It's consistent work. And then all of a sudden like things come up mm -hmm. and you're like, Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. That makes so much sense. Now, I think that the success of the podcast, first of all, I'm incredibly grateful for it. Incredibly grateful. But in many ways, I'm doing exactly what I was doing when I was that six, seven, eight, nine year old kid. I'm yeah. learning and sharing. So it was always in me. And it always felt like this energy, this thing, like, it's like, how did, how did I end up like this? How come all the other kids like don't have this? Mm -hmm. And how come sometimes it feels like a little bit of a, not a curse, but kind of a burden? Like, what do I do with this? And the deep satisfaction for me comes from acknowledging this is me. I've always been this way. It's not going to change. And that I, it's not coming from me. It's coming through me. Right. And I just want to do right by it. En primer lugar, el hecho de que una eminencia científica cree en Dios tampoco significa que Dios exista como tal. Como bien lo menciona el Dr. Hubermans en su video, dentro del campo científico hay personas con diferentes tipos de creencias. Ahora, como médico, yo me puedo identificar completamente con lo que el Dr. Huberman se está diciendo. Porque yo recuerdo que la primera vez que me tocó observar el mundo microscópico como estudiante de medicina, yo quedé sin palabras. Y conforme navegaba en el estudio de la fisiología del cuerpo humano y la forma en la que realmente cada célula trabaja para mantener un balance perfecto, una homeostasis, un equilibrio, eh, de manera automática, porque ni siquiera nosotros estamos regulando estos procesos de manera consciente, es impresionante, impresionante. Y ver que, que, que el doctor Huberman, como, como un neurocientífico, lo primero que dice él, a ver, independientemente de las creencias de las personas, yo creo que lo primero que debemos hacer es dar un paso atrás y simplemente decir, wow. Porque es verdad que cuando uno estudia a profundidad este mundo invisible ante nuestros ojos, en un mundo microscópico, y vemos la complejidad que existe, el orden realmente, las funciones, los cientos de funciones eh, bioquímicas que, que tienen que llevar a cabo para que, para que la vida como tal sea posible. Esto es algo que de manera natural nos invita a pensar y a considerar la existencia de un ser inteligente o de un creador divino. Ahora, no estoy diciendo que por el simple hecho de encontrarnos con, con un reto tan grande en términos de complejidad, eso signifique, por lo tanto, que Dios existe. No estoy diciendo eso. Simplemente que de manera natural es inevitable para muchos. Incluso Richard Dawkins, que es un biólogo Oxford ateísta muy conocido a nivel global, él mismo admite esto que estoy comentando. De manera personal, para mí esto fue el principio de un camino realmente que cambió mi vida y que me llega al segundo punto de este video, que son las experiencias personales. Si bien son subjetivas, realmente tienen un valor muy importante para las personas. Y es que la vida al finalmente no se trata solo de química orgánica, física o biología en un laboratorio. La vida va más allá del mundo físico. Y es ahí cuando verdaderamente encontramos la esencia del ser humano o del hombre. Y esto inevitablemente nos lleva a preguntarnos si la realidad de Dios es posible en nuestras vidas. Algo que, por supuesto, en mi historia y mi testimonio, pues se ha convertido en una realidad más que en términos de argumentos o de intelecto o de teología, sino algo que vivo de manera real en el día a día. Así que, bueno, más adelante seguiremos explorando esto. Eh, tengo un video preparado que, que habla precisamente sobre la ciencia detrás de la oración y también unos estudios eh, recientes que fueron presentados por un psiquiatra sobre el tema de la salud mental en el hombre y las implicaciones también de la espiritualidad en la persona. Así que bueno, espero que les guste nuestro trabajo. Aquellos que quieran ver más información, vean la descripción del video, ahí encontrarán los enlaces. Y bueno, aquellos que quieran apoyarnos, les agradecemos mucho. Y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Gracias.